Hello everyone, welcome to Anthropology Analytica. I'm Dr. Arjun Boparna, your Anthropology faculty at Insights IAS. In today's video, let us try to solve this question, human adaptation to high altitude. Okay, so this is a very uh, commonly asked question. So in the syllabus, if you have a look at it, you will realize that there are three very important topics relating to human adaptation to its environment. So human adaptation to hot, environment, human adaptation to cold environment and human adaptation to high altitude. And every year, if you have seen the previous year question, almost every year, they ask these questions repeatedly. So over here, let me address this question on high altitude before we go into the structure of the uh, answer. So for all your answer, whether it is hot, whether it is cold or whether adaptation to high altitude, all your answer should contain these four um, subheadings okay uh, adaptation should contain these four headings so one is cultural psychological or technological that is behavioral adaptation so what does man do culturally what are the various cultural aspects okay technological aspects uh, that helps him better adapt to his environment so as you know again uh, people who are inhabiting a particular environment has developed various technology, various cultural means over a period of time, which helps them to better adapt to that environment, better harness energy from that particular environment. So these are the cultural responses or technological responses or which we can also put it under behavioral response. So when you're talking about hot attitude, I mean, hot uh, climate or cold climate, the, uh, what are the various cultural features? Like it could be with respect to housing. It could be with respect to the dress that they wear, the kind of food that they consume, you know, high calorie diet or whether it is high, um, uh, you know, uh, fatty diet, etc. So the kind of food that they consume and the kind of uh, economic practices, are they nomadic? Usually we see in the hot environment, the community is going to be nomadic uh, and the kind of dress that they wear would cover their entire body example. Okay, so these are all the behavioral changes. So as we have realized that on a long term basis, if a community is living in a particular environment, they have better technologies to adapt to a particular environment. So in one of the paragraph, one paragraph heading, you should write behavioral adaptation and then write the various uh, features and then give the examples of the same. In the second heading, you'll write the physiology. Now, biologically, there are three ways in which human can adapt to the environment, depending upon how long that particular community has lived in that particular environment. So uh, the immediate response, whatever changes that happens in a very short duration, and it is reversible. So when the stress is removed, uh, the changes will, uh, you know, return back to its original Okay, so physiological changes are those changes which happens immediately in a very short span of time, immediately to a couple of days. Okay, so those are the physiological changes. Even in that, there are two things. One is short term and the other one is long term. Short term is immediate. So these are regulatory changes that happens in human body. So they are rapid and uh, they are uh, physiological response like change in the pulse rate. Okay, pulse rate or shivering, right? So these are all immediate. As soon as you go, for example, go to a cold environment, you start to shiver to increase, to raise the body temperature. So this happens very rapidly, immediately, and therefore they are short term regulatory physiological changes. Then when you stay in that place for a couple of days, you start to develop uh, you know, another type of physiological changes, which we call it as acclimatization, right? So this happens after two to three days. So your body starts to get adjusted um, for that particular environment. So you go to a high altitude. As soon as you go to the high altitude, you will start breathing rapidly. You're not able, you're feeling discomfort. Your exercise capacity reduces. You're not able to consume food and all that. But as you spend a couple of days, two to three days, you start to get acclimatized. Your breathing rate starts to reduce, uh, mainly because the uh, body starts to produce more blood cells, etc. So this process is called as acclimatization. Both these regulatory and acclimatory process, even though it happens in a very short span of time, it is reversible. That means when the stress is removed, these changes and uh, stops. 
So these are acclimatization. Okay, so uh, usually in acclimatization, there is change in the structure of the organism. Um, so when the stress is present for a longer period of time, this happens. Okay, so that is acclimatization. After acclimatization, the next type of uh, adaptation that we see in human being is called as developmental adaptation. So this occurs when the stress is present during growth and development. So this happens when the individual is subjected to the stress of the environment during the growth and development phase. Okay, so therefore it is not reversible. Developmental changes that happens is not reversible. The idea that human have the ability to mould themselves during developmental period. See, an example is when a child grows, uh, is born and grows in a high altitude, irrespective of whichever race, when they are growing, they are put into stress of that particular environment, therefore develops a bigger chest compared to others or, you know, more lung capacity compared to others. Okay, so this kind of anatomical changes that we see during the growth and development process of the individual is called as developmental response. So this happens when the individual is subjected to stress for a long period of time and during growth and development. And whatever changes that happens during developmental period do not change. It is not reversible. Once that change has occurred in the anatomy of the person, that, like say for example, in high altitude, bigger chest, higher lung volume. Okay, So these changes do not reverse. Even when they come after the developmental period, if they come to the low lines, their chest size is not going to change. So the ability of individuals to mould themselves or humans to mould themselves is called as genetic plasticity. Okay, Genetic plasticity. So this is the third type of adaptation that we see. And lastly, genetic changes. So these are the changes that we see at the population level, at the population level. Say, for example, a population, a community has lived in a particular environment for a long period of time, generation after generation. So there are certain genes which are selected and there are certain genes which are eliminated due to natural selection in that particular environment. So those changes remain in that population generation after generation. So we see racial differences as a result of environmental condition. Uh, say, let's say Mongoloid race is more adapted to the cold environment. This has happened at the population level. So those are seen over generations. Okay, so you will have to write your answer in all these four subheadings. What are the cultural response? What are the physiological short-term response? Physiological long-term response? then developmental changes and genetic change that happens at the population level. Now, coming back to our question over here, human adaptation to high altitude. So in all these questions, this is the framework of your answer. So your introduction should contain what is the stress that they face in high altitude or cold, hot, whatever is the question. So first about three to four sentence, you will have to explain what is the stress in the environment. For example, in high altitude, the stress is cold and the stress is high altitude, uh, sorry, um, uh, hypoxia. Because of high altitude, the oxygen concentration, the partial pressure of oxygen at high altitude is low. So therefore, the exchange of oxygen to the lungs is reduced. And therefore, they face shortage of oxygen. So this condition of shortage of oxygen is called as high, uh, hypoxia. Along with that, even high altitude may face the condition of cold climate, it's, it's reduction in the temperature. As we go on higher altitude, the temperature goes on reducing. So they have to adapt to even cold environment. So therefore, these are the two stresses that we see in high altitude. Give some examples, polar region or in case of, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, in high altitude examples, uh, you know, in uh, South American Andes, Ethiopia or uh, Asian Himalaya, Rocky Mountains of US. So give examples of the same. So uh, when exposed, uh, further you can say, as when uh, somebody goes to the high altitude, they experience symptoms of discomfort, 
there is reduced work capacity accelerated breathing okay so it has been shown even studies in india for example so all those examples you'll have to write for example study done by vikas tripathi in india vikas tripathi has shown that there is a 65 percent increase in the rate of breathing when the people from the plane go to high altitude all right so then there is also higher hemoglobin level higher arterial pressure all these changes are induced in order to adapt to hypoxic condition okay so these are the stress conditions so that will be your introduction once you have written the introduction right then you will go to explaining how they adapt to hypoxia and how do they adapt to cold so i just listed out here you can organize it as per when you write your answer so in high altitude the partial pressure of oxygen is less almost 40 percent so therefore when the partial pressure is less uh, the body uh, i mean the uh, oxygen that is exchanged also reduces so therefore we need to adapt to this so either there should be uh, you know the adaptation is such that they increase the oxygen availability to the tissue or at the level of the tissue increase the oxygen available to the tissue so there are various mechanism that happens so there is increase in the number of capillaries okay so that they shorten the distance of travel of oxygen increase the pulmonary ventilation so this is done by increase in the lung volume by increasing the residual lung volume so this is also a developmental adjustment that happens during the childhood uh, this happens by increasing the number of alveoli and the surface area then larger lung larger residual volume then polycythemia then increase work capacity all right and even in terms of reproduction okay there is low birth weight of babies there is increased postnatal death growth rate of uh, children is slowed down this is because of demand to the chest and bone marrow then also maturation is delayed uh, up to 16 years and uh, there is also adaptation to alkalosis this is due to loss of carbon dioxide so this affects the acid base metabolism therefore excessive loss of base is there in urine so these are all the changes that you'll have to write in hypoxic condition then adaptation to the cold we have physiological adaptation like vasoconstriction lewis huntington's phenomena where there is a, a, a vasoconstriction followed by shivering shivering to increase the uh, basal metabolic rate therefore increase the temperature of the body on a long term there is increase in basal metabolic rate and uh, there is fat accumulation or insulation of vital organs to protect them from the cold there is also change in the blood flow pattern such that the core uh, temperature is kept high to maintain the vital organs then there are cultural responses with respect to the kind of housing to insulate themselves from the cold then to provide them the uh, dress that helps them to protect them from cold for hypoxic condition, the cultural response can be with respect to the type of activities that they perform. They do intermittent working, the kind of diet that they have, fatty diet, etc. More caloric diet because there is more energy consumption. So these kind of cultural responses are seen in high altitude. So this way, one by one, you will have to write the various uh, adaptation that or changes that has happened in human population, human individual in order to adapt to the stress of high altitude. Okay, so this is the structure of uh, and the answer that you need to write for this particular question, human adaptation to high altitude. The same framework can also be used for writing other questions relating to hot, cold and uh, cold environment also. I hope it was useful. In the next video, we shall discuss sacred complex as a dimension of Indian civilization. I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching.